So in regards to the TLO review I did a while back, I once mentioned about a game called The End of Disney, which was supposed to be canon technically to the old story of the TLO series. I never thought to review that game in that video due to it being very old, like way before The Lost Ones even was a thing, and it felt out of place from the other games. So I thought that it'd only be right if we take this back, a long way back. That's right guys, we're going to be looking over all of Morad's old Fnatic games in this video. Just like the Lost Ones, I'll be looking over their lore in the games, how they play, how they look, and how they... Sound. Oh god, I'm still recovering from Fnatic TLO. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. Has Speed finally lost it? Probably. The fact that there are 16 games I'll be reviewing in this video. Yep, you heard me correctly. 16 freaking games! Now some of these are technically the same game but just have different versions and mechanics in them. But by God, we're gonna look at all of them. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and let me take you back. Back to the days of early 2016. Here we are, very early 2016. This was more its very first Fnatic game, and it shows. All it is, is just a recoding of all the unused things in the first version of the original Fnatic when it got cancelled with Mick Mick also added, which makes sense since Mora's first Fnatic game came out after 3.0. Now what you see is what you get. Two nights of calls in them, the suits roam into your office, shut off a camera, blah blah blah. It's not anything special. But it definitely feels unfinished. Characters don't show up at times when they're supposed to, renders just overlap on each other. But hey, at least there's new characters like... Pluto. And... Mick. Oh, and Henry! He's just a corpse, though. Oh well. So yeah, Henry's in this game too. Like, as an actual roaming character. Doesn't really make sense because of Undying being active as well, but whatever! He jump scares you by grabbing you. Figures. And when you beat Night 6, you get... Nothing! Nothing happens! And then you unlock extras, which you can get on Night 5, actually. And you can check them out. The characters spin around, but the extras have this bug in them. They don't work properly, and they sometimes have the habit of crashing the game. But yeah, that's Fnatic Original! Okay, can I go now? Oh, there's a remaster. Of course there is. The game comes out and a few weeks later, Morat decides to remake it. Wow, a remaster in a few weeks? Well, I'm sure the remaster will look way better. Let's have a look. It looks exactly the same! So Remastered 1.0 is basically everything original was, but improves on it. First of all, it adds in Hortensia, who was a model of Oswald, but changed a bit. We even got Willy from 3.0, he's now in this game. And... Daisy. Okay then. And... Wait, who's that again? Sorry, I don't know. Wait, that's Hourglass? What the fuck? There's even brand new recorded phone guy lines. It's no longer reused from Anart's version. Hey, bud. This is Craig. Thanks for helping us out with this again. And yes, by the way, this isn't an old Morag game without voice lines. Every character has voice lines now. Either reused from Anart's Fnatic game or brand new voice lines made up. They all have voices. Make it stop! But my favorite of the bunch is Suicide Mouse's voice. Real is not known. He sounds like he's Brazilian. There you go, people. The most scariest Disney creepypasta. And it turns out he sounds like Consuela from Family Guy. I this God, I wish I knew who voiced him. Oh, and something worth mentioning. Every Pirate Caverns has the player survive to a 3 in the main night, then survive to a 6 in Pirate Caverns. Because that's not overused. Now, here's the interesting thing about this game. And that is it actually has cutscenes in it. For what they are, the animation is alright. And the plot? Well, it's Jake killing the Mickey costumes. Yeah, that's how it goes. And then some more and more, holy shit, then you beat Night 5 and... Oh. It's you again.
Don't worry, I'm not here to harm you. But there is a reason why I'm here. You're here to kill me. There's literally no other reason for it. What, you're here to give me a Snapchat or something? So basically, this being right here is called God. Yes, that's her name. And she's communicating with Jake, the person we play as, about a specific incident we did. And, yep, it's night six. It's now completely different from the other nights. It's PM now, and you're quote-unquote surviving against a regular Mickey. When he jumps against Jake, he teases him and goes backstage. And then, Jake gets mad and says he's gonna get revenge on them. And proceeds to get a butcher knife. So, basically, the reason why the characters are like this is because Jake can't take a joke. That's the whole plot of Morat's old Fanati story. Well, that guy's a piece of shit! <laughs> Damn right. Now, you might be wondering, if Jake is the killer in this story, why did he return to the island? Wouldn't he have ran away and hid? Well, here's the neat thing. I don't know! And I'm pretty sure Mora doesn't even know why either. Oh, and something interesting about this game. It might only happen for me, but I cannot unlock Night 6. It just doesn't work for me. I've beaten Night 5 a thousand times at this point. Cutscene plays with God, enter back out to the menu, and Night 6 doesn't unlock for me. I thought maybe I had to collect this tape in a safe in Pirate Cannons to deal with this problem, but nope! Same thing happens and I can't get to Night 6. Fantastic. So overall, there's seven nights in this game and an endless night. While this game is bad, like, pretty bad, it's not Fnatic 2017, so it's not that bad. But yeah, that's Remastered 1.0. Well, that about clears up the main game, and to think, there's a sequel! Yes, Morat actually made a sequel, called Let the Show Begin, and I guess he was really decisive on what it was going to be, considering there are three versions of this game. The first version being... Well shit, this looks like it wasn't even finished. Makes sense considering it's a demo. Anyway, the visuals look alright. What they are, not super great or anything. And the mechanics? Well, to put it simple, it's just FNAF 2! Literally all it is, is just put on the mask, watch as they go out the office, don't wear the mask too long for toxicity reasons. That's all version 1 is. And there's no night one phone call either. Okay, strange, but considering it's a demo, that's fine. So why in the hell is there one in night two then? To wrap this up, shit game, boring mechanics, and that's about it. And now V2. It has a bit of a better title screen. It's still a demo, but hey, at least the mechanic has changed. I wonder what it is. It's just the camera shutdown mechanic. You just press the audio when they're in the room and they're gone. Plain and simple. Although the recharge for the audio takes, I kid you not, roughly 40 seconds. What the hell? But basically, it's the same game, just with new mechanics. Nothing different. But now, we have the final version. Version 3. It has a much better title screen than the rest, the music is from Nitro Glitch, and the office now has a reworking. So basically, to put it simply to why we're here, we're Henry. Because this game is apparently a prequel now, and we're in a studio looking over the place. I would tell you more what we're doing, but from everyone else being active, it's hard to hear the phone guy at all! Now, the mechanics. Simple. Basic. It's just the version 2 mechanics, except the audio recharges faster. So every character that wanders in, or one back out from the audio. Every character. This game is as dull as corkboard in terms of gameplay, and I feel like playing this is the same as playing with a calculator. Speaking of the characters... What the hell are these? It looks like someone just pushed them into the sand, laughed at them, and they stayed there for hours before finally coming back up. And then there's Happy Mouse. Freaking Happy Mouse! Oh god! What the hell happened to you, huh? I never looked better. Oh yeah? Well, it looks like you've been smoking that salsa again! And you look like you've been buried in sand for five years! <laughs> Seriously, all these designs look ass and unoriginal. Why is Abandoned Mickey even a thing? Just have PM as always, but no, of course you won't. He just had to be original with dusting his eyes, Mickey. My eyes, the goggles do nothing. Back to the game. So apart from the mechanics, you can boop the nose. So, hey, at least Morat's got one good thing from the game. <laughs> you also got a shitty hallucination that plays every minute, but also the AI. It's absolutely broken. Like, no, seriously, you have no time to react. It's crazy how bad it is. Especially when really all you have to do is play audio and deal with every character in the room. 
Except Donald, who makes an ear raping noise to signal he's in the room to deal with him. Daisy does the same thing as Donald, except even louder! But honestly, you know for a fact when the game is bad, when the developer literally forgot to take out a dev key. If you press the X key, you can instantly skip a night. And this is for all nights too. No matter what night you're on, you can instantly skip it and ignore the bullcrap. Hey speedrunners, get on this, cause this is the game for you. So yes, there is cutscenes like the previous game, they're just the same as before. Repetitive scary noise, Jake killing each character, then Ketchup Man comes out of Henry's dead body, pretty much the usual. But then there's... this one cutscene. They're finally all dead. Now I can leave this pathetic island. Quick, Mickey, take the Infinity Stones. <laughs> I shall rise! I'm coming for the theirs, boy! Oh, fuck, uh... Catch! Fatality. Yeah, it's exactly that. No words for it. So that's basically it for Let the Show Begin. Final thoughts? Don't play this game if you have hay fever. All that dust from them won't be good for you. So, where do we go from there? I mean, the sequel was practically awful. Well, you fully reboot the sequel into something completely different. Which is basically Treasure Island, but it's FNAF 3! Five Nights at Treasure Island 2 Original Revamp. A mouthful of a name. This game was in the drawing board for so long, having many betas, like a full FNAF 3 title screen, and Mickey being green like he's Shrek, other cut characters with sus text, the whole shebang. Wait, and let me just the... pause for a sec. So, I made a mistake. While I talk about the old versions of original revamp, the old version actually had a lot more than I originally thought, because it actually had a recode in it that actually showed a lot more in it. First of all, there were the cameras which are god awful, the models were way worse than I ever thought, and the story has god forcing Greg through hell. It really is just FNAF 3 but worse. Anyway, back to the main game. And then the game finally released. In 2016. Seriously. Almost all of these old Fnatic games appeared in 2016. Move over, Ken Carter! Move over, Tanner Feeline! Move over, Wester! You guys are getting overshadowed! What, does it take you guys a few years to make a new fan game? More right? Like magic! So as we enter the title screen, we get a very stereotypical Fnaf 3 title screen, with Springtrap Mickey on the front. Yeah, I'm gonna say this now, but that's Jake. Yeah! The killer in the series is basically purple guy at this point. But hey, at least the design looks pretty unique and all right. Uh, ha! Uh, <laughs> what is that? What is that? It looks like a strawberry that's been left in the sun for too long. Heading into the game and oh my god, can the phone guy seriously just speak up? We head to the game to find out that it's definitely quite a new experience. Does it feel like your stereotypical Fnatty game? But it's not 100% original. It's basically FNAF 3, FNAF 2, and Flumpty's 2 all in one. You turn off the lights to get rid of anyone in your office and make sure your dread meter doesn't go all the way up. And you also have to wind or, I'm sorry, charge this generator to make the power not go out. So yeah, FNAF 3 office also means FNAF 3 like Disney characters. But no Goofy though. There's really not anything else special to this. No cutscenes, no post-night stuff, nothing. Just simple sit and survive. But of course, the AI sucks. It wouldn't be a 2016 game where the AI being broken as hell and Mr. Raisin comes in and kills you all the time. <laughs> For what it is, the idea of the characters isn't the worst I've seen- oh, who am I kidding? This is basically just a FNAF 3 clone almost. But hey, I'll give it props. It stands out way more than the other games ever did, making this game more unique, for good reasons, and bad ones. Well, this next one is probably the most infamous, Nightmare Before Disney. Probably the most worked on game out of all the others in this series. Back when Subwoofer had her MBD on indefinite hold at the time, Morat decided to remake MBD as his own unofficial version, but still made it canon to the story. And yes, just like LTSB, there were three versions. But each version was a completely finished game, and seriously guys, there were so many betas and unreleased things that just never saw the light of day, especially him. And in the end, the game ended up with three versions. The first version had the office pretty small and had your basic nightmare-like characters. They looked all awful. 
and PM. Don't get me started on him. He looks like a bruised blueberry. Now, all you have to do to get them out of your office is shine your light on them. That's it. You'd think they'd be other mechanics, but no. It's just shining a light on them. And it's so boring, too, because a single night, one single night, lasts 10 minutes and 10 seconds long. I'm not making this up. This is one of the longest nights in fan game history. And it's so boring, too. You just sit there. There's literally nothing to do. The only decent thing about V1 is that there's a post-night section after night 3. It's basically part of Cavern, just some new rooms and such. But it's called the Catacombs instead. And the post-night section happens after beating the night, like, regularly, instead of just 3am. Now the thing is, there's actually two endings. To get the good ending, get the key and beat the game. To get the bad ending, don't collect the key and beat the game. It's either Jake dies or lives. But you know what? From the hell I went through, I'm pretty sure I'd want Jake to die at this point. So version 2 is definitely much more different. It has a bigger office and brand new mechanics. First of all, some characters go away with clicking on the voodoo door button. And when some jump scare you, they act just like the phantoms from FNAF 3, but instead they raise your heartbeat meter, which you can't allow to go over 100 or you'll die. So you click on the pills to slow down your heartbeat. In Hortensia, you click on the gate button to raise the timer for the gate. Unique mechanics, but poor AI. You'll be spamming the voodoo button forever. But hey, at least the time to beat the night is shorter than version 1, so at least it's got that. But AI, don't get me started on it! The AI is actually so broken, Goofy will always kill you on night 3. Always! So who knows what happens if we beat this game? If anyone's actually brave enough to beat this. But I guess the title is right though. I am in a nightmare. And this is my hell! And finally, we have version 3. The AI and the other ones are so bad, I can't wait to try this one. So now the office is completely huge. We've gone from the office looking like a standard scary office to being the size of a freaking cave! So the mechanics have been completely changed yet again. They are now much more simple. Watch your tensi on the cameras, whenever you see someone, click on the voodoo doll, and click on the pills to keep your heart rate below 100. Oh, and this is the game with Nightmare Undying in it, who's got meat cleavers for hands like he's Edward Scissorhands or something, and... Holy crap, I didn't know Undying's got that mad cake. Why is he so oiled up? So, another thing to mention. There's this thing with most of Morat's old Trinity games. Well, the camera tab is basically just a button and doesn't disappear, so if you put your mouse on it, it'll loop forever, going up and down, since Mora couldn't figure out how to make the tab disappear when the mouse is on it at the time. Jake's probably gonna work out doing this with all the camera tablets. Back to version 3. The nights are a tiny bit shorter than version 2, but not by much. And there's no post-night stuff in version 3 either, nor in version 2. Only version 1 had post-night stuff. But hey, at least version 3's got cutscenes, which... Well, Jake finally gets put where he belongs, in an electric chair, by policemen who can't even walk properly. And then, wakes up here. How? Because Fnatic. So yeah, you go through each night and beat it and... Wait, what the hell happened with the game? Why the fuck is it... AH! your bitch! Not funny. Anyway, you beat the main knights, you collapse on the ground in the same place you were, which is the prison. You then go back to night 6 because you're a moron, beat it, and then you get the exact same cutscene from Remaster 1.0, but just in a different perspective. Because of course, people need to see it again. It was so good! Oh my god, that freaking model though. So apart from the extras and the max mode, that's it for the whole game! Apart from the eggplant that was planned for a night 5 boss, there's nothing else to show. Except no. If you click on the red star after beating Max Mode, you get an 8th Night, or Vision Night as it's called. You're now in a different building, with Fnatic-like sounds, bruh, click team counter, and three new characters called Vision Suits. They look like knockoff official MBD characters, which makes sense, since Vision Night was something Black Hat requested to promote 4.0 and MBD 2016 before they were even released. So yeah, all you're doing this night is shut off the camera whenever they enter into your room. Easy stuff, right? WRONG! The cameras have a bug in them where they sometimes either some of them don't turn off, or none of them turn off and you die. I've never made it past 4am with this bug in the game. Just like version 2, this night is just not possible because of the bugs. But yeah, that's all that version 3, and finally, MBD has to offer. The nightmare's finally over. We've gone through FNAF 3 Disney characters, nightmare characters, and even dust allergy characters. What could Morat possibly do to make something original from the Fnatic formula? I'll tell you what. Two words. Disney animatronics. 
And you might think, oh, cool, so like the actual mascots from Disneyland you see, but as animatronics? Well, Five Nights at Mickey's Pizza Club was a one-off game that only survived a one-night demo. Actually, two. Two one-night demos. The only other one that exists is on Scratch. Yes! More I did for Natty Games on Scratch! The game looks like it was taken from Gmod. In fact, it was. All the renders were taken straight from Gmod. This demo actually makes the other one look way better. Speaking of the other one, that one night demo was so horrible that Morad himself didn't want anything to do with it then, and certainly doesn't want anything to do with it now, considering the game is actually not on his collection game page. You know, the game page that actually has all the old Fnatic games I'm going through? This game is almost like lost media at this point. But it's been found, and people have played it. When you start up the game, the title screen looks as janky as ever. But I'll give it props for the small animation that plays when you press enter to go to the new game and low game selections. Starting up the game, you have an office that looks way much more different than any Fnatic game. Now this just looks like a Fnaf fan game. So hey, at least we got a new phone call, and it's way more audible now. But yeah, basically, the mechanics can be summed down to closed door, use theme, and office. There's only one character active, and that's Mickey. With those eyes. Yeah, I have to come clear about these designs. WHAT THE HELL HAPPENED TO ALL OF THEM?! They look like they had their eyes gorged out and replaced with these metallic grapes they called eyes. Especially Donald's model. Fuck Donald's model. So yeah, you beat night one, and... That's it! Again, there was only one night to this demo. The game was never fully finished, and I think I speak for all of us when I say THANK GOD! For a game that has only two mechanics, and weird visuals, ESPECIALLY models, it almost seems like there was no effort put here in the slightest. This may be a pizza club, but I'm not in the mood for no pizza time. So you might have thought that Remastered 1.0 was the last remake Morat did from his old Fnatic games? Well, YOU'D BE WRONG! Now the fact that there's a lot of changes compared to Original and Remastered 1.0, and also how 2.0 came out way later after the other Fnatic games, it only makes sense for me to review this separately from the others. First of all, the office is completely remade. Well, kinda. Brand new rooms and a reworked pirate caverns along with new phone calls. Hey bud, this is Greg. Never mind then, I guess the calls are the same. Now, I know what a lot of people will say, and yes, I also do believe Morat based Remaster 2.0 after Abandoned Discovery Island, as the office does look a bit similar to it. In fact, both of these games are based off the office from Anarts 2.0 Fnatty. Now, when I say Remastered 2.0 is like 1.0, I mean it. It completely remade the cutscenes, Night 6 of Day 1, and the story is exactly the same. So yes, Jake is still as butthurt as ever. Now, something I forgot to mention that was also a mechanic in Remastered 1.0, but if you press P, you can turn the power off. Now, it's kind of like the gimmick from Fnatic 2020, but instead it stays off until it reverts back on itself and you'd have to press space to use a flashlight and hide under the desk if you saw anyone. Basic stuff. The voices are the same, with Suicide Mouse still with that goddamn voice! I swear his voice is so bad it's good! <laughs> I will show you the true suffering if you dare to speak up on my voice ever again! Now come on, wouldn't that be- He's not kidding! You better listen to him! Shut up, Elmo. Anyway, look, let's just calm down here, alright? We're all reasonable here. Let's just calm down and not engage anything, okay? And plus, I mean, wouldn't it be a bit embarrassing to be killed by a knockoff Will? <laughs> There's only one new character in this game, and that is Pete. But he just behaves like everyone else. No new mechanics. Which is funny, since Pete was planned for the original 2.0 by Anart, but he was never put in. And Mora just put him in himself. Also, actually no, this actually goes for all of Morat's games in this review. You may have noticed how the games changed from a widescreen 16x9 ratio to a 4x3 ratio. Either in game or in the menus. They always change. If you're gonna make a game, at least have a consistent screen ratio. Back to Remastered 2.0. There's a couple new things that make 2.0 different than 1.0. For starters, it has two endings. If you beat the night or day, as usual, you get the stereotypical ending of Jake being a butthurt piece of crap, but if you die in the night, you get an alternate ending, where it shows the person was Henry in the Mickey suit who killed Jake. Because that's convoluted as hell- Wait. So if Henry was Mickey, and he was killed and turned into P&M, 
That would mean Henry is three characters all at once. The f dog. But finally, what if I were to tell you there's another knight, completely brand new? How do you unlock it, you ask? Well, all you gotta do is just click on the button in the extras. I know. Super hard. It's called Floor 1 Minigame, which makes sense as you're basically looking over pirate caverns. It plays sister location music, and you only have one character to deal with, that being Face. You click on the sides to view them, and all you have to do is shut off the camera when you see him. That's really all there is. I like how Morat tried to make something new, but it still ended up not being that good. In the end, Remaster 2.0 is just a much cleaner and much more polished version of Remaster 1.0 and the other remakes Mora has done. I'd recommend playing this one out of the others. Or don't. That's probably the better option to go with. Here we are guys, the game you've all been waiting for. Five Nights to Treasure Island The End of Disney. Probably one of Morat's most unique old Fnatic games. It was created as Morat's last attempt at something creepy for the Disney formula, and there were two versions of it. The first version has characters that look like knockoff nightmare characters, and that's because they are. The end of Disney was originally planned to be another reboot to MBD. I mean, you can tell from the exact same flashlight battery UI from MBD V1, but then started to turn into something completely different. And that's how the end of Disney came to be. This version was technically the brand new sequel to Fnaty, ignoring original revamp and let the show begin. The game was never finished, so there was only two nights in it. Entering night one, you have probably what is one of, if not the creepiest ambience out of all the games. You also get a phone call, which is actually clear to hear, and contains what I think the best, worst voice actor for Jake. The person who recorded this was Blackout, actually, and from his voice, it sounds like Jake's a German immigrant pretending to be American. He's legit gone from a regular human to monster to German. Okay, seriously, why does his voice keep changing? So we are Greg, who just went back to the island because in Jake's words... Are you completely retarded? The mechanics are as followed. Shine your light on some characters, hide under the desk, and shut off the cameras. Except, when you shut off the cameras, you're told to turn them on manually, so they don't turn on themselves and have limited usage. The game does just feel like a glorified mess of mechanics, which is true, does have a feel of the classic Fnatic formula with only a few new features. Lastly, just like Let the Show Begin, there was a dev key left in the game. Makes a bit more sense now since it's a demo, so when you press the M key, it'll always spawn Hellbound P&M in your office. Always, and you can get rid of him and keep pressing the M key to spawn him every single time. Overall, the only good thing about version 1 is the ambience and the phone call. Well, this is it. Version 2. And, okay, let me just stop the music here for a sec. Um, okay, look, I know what you wanted to say about this game, so let's just get it out of the way, okay? You know exactly what you wanted to say. So let's just say it all together. Repeat after me! It was played by Markiplier! Yay! We got that covered? Good. Let's get on with the game. This is the version of the game that was said to be canon to the old Lost One story. The game is now fully remade from the ground up, with new fonts, new mechanics, and new characters. And honestly, despite a few characters, the new designs actually look pretty decent and unique. We're still Greg trying to leave the island, and there's no phone calls, just text. The mechanics are as followed. Use the shockers whenever someone's at the doorways, hide under the desk, and charge up the generators. You have to do this every night in order to survive till 6, otherwise you'll die. And just like the first version, there's a bunch of voices for the characters. I want to see your head come off. For the last time, I'm not gonna give you head, you rotten blueberry. Go back and cry to your demon daddy. Oh man. Damn, bro. You got rejected. There's also a post night to this game. Once you beat night three, you get pirate caverns. It's even more broken down than before. 
You wander around, you find a door, get dropped by Undying, and throw a butcher knife at Ketchup Man's face. Guess Greg learned some skills from Jake. So Night 5 is as usual, with hard AI. A bit balanced and not as RNG based, but still kind of annoying. And then you also got- This is back. <laughs> oh my god, for real, can you just piss off? I'm tired of seeing you here. I don't want you here, and I surely don't like you. Can you just leave me the hell alone? You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just get up and pretend this game never exists. You know, I'm just gonna go now. I'm going out the door. I'm just gonna leave now. Okay, bye. In all seriousness, that is probably one of the scariest jump scares made by Mora in 2016. The rest in this game look like your average jump scare, but this one, even if it's technically a death screen, holy hell. Entering back into night five, you survive till 5 a.m. and oh crap! Oh shit! I had to Come on. Come on. Come on. So you have this annoying space bar mechanic that lasts a minute. One freaking minute of doing this. And if you don't do it enough, you die and have to start over. What kind of bullcrap is that? It's so random. I'm going to end up with sprained fingers by the time I'm done with this. And better yet, once you actually beat it and you see yourself leaving the room, the game ends right there! It just ends! This ending is so unsatisfying and not rewarding whatsoever. And I honestly feel like beating this was like typing a 1000 word English essay for school. Overall, this version of The End of Disney is obviously better than its first version, and probably one of the best old Fnatic games in my opinion, even with all of its flaws and annoying parts. And despite what the title says and the credits, it was not the end of Disney after all, but rather the beginning. Now you're looking at this game and saying, wait, isn't this just remastered 2.0? And to put it simply, no. ADI Jeff the Killer is a very small fan game that Morat made as a little mini game based off Abandoned Discovery Island and NRTS 2.0. Since originally Jeff the Killer, along with other creepypastas, were planned to be in 2.0 as a small little bonus or post-game stuff. Because characters like Jason Voorhees deserve shit all. But it never got finished. So Moran has chosen to make a whole game based on that one night Jeff the Killer was planned for. So the game has a beginning cutscene with someone not operating a knife properly- Oh. Oh, hey, hey Jeff. You've seen better days. Shh. Go back to sleep. Jeff, it is 12 in the afternoon. No. Anyway, the game shows you in the office with Jeff's theme. And then the power goes off, leaving you in darkness in a flashlight. And you have to survive to a six. Plain and simple. When you see Jeff, you hide under the desk and wait for footsteps to signal he's gone. But you can't hide under the desk for too long, as your dread meter will go down slowly doing so. Definitely not a knockoff from the dread meter from original revamp whatsoever. It sounds simple. But this is an old Fnaty game, let's be real. The AI is always gonna bite you back. Jeff will sometimes appear twice, even after leaving. And also the dread meter takes a while sometimes to fully recharge. And when you get jump skipped by Jeff, the game crashes, making it really annoying to start over as it takes about roughly two minutes to get back into the night. Now once you beat the night, you beat the game. This is pretty much Morat's most shortest game and feels more like a mini game that would have been in a main game. Now the only other thing in this game is something called free roam, where you click on any characters you want active and you move around the building like a point and click free roam, as the name says. It's basically a glorified pirate caverns where you just run away from anyone in the same room as you as you survive till 6. Now you're at this point wondering, but speed, what is considered canon? There's so many reboots for a sequel, and so many games, where does it all fit in? Well. To put it simply to watch the canonicity of the old games, everything but nothing. They're canon with each other and they're not. Simple as that. In the end, this is the most lackluster fan game I've ever played. And it's pretty much a game where you can play it just to kill a few minutes. Nothing more. So, it's now 2017. The Jeff the Killer game was pretty much the latest Fnatic game Morat made. Besides the lost ones, there's not been much Fnatic from Morat. That was until early April, when he revealed a huge surprise.
Five Nights at Treasure Island 3. Finally. After pretty much saying he wouldn't do it, denying it multiple times, it was all a cover. And now, the series now gets a proper trilogy. After so many sequels, the series will now receive its third game. And from what we have so far, I mean, it looks pretty good. The menu shows this pretty well made with a PNM, and the game page has these really cool screenshots of the game. Turns out they were not images of gameplay, just random renders more I did for fun on DeviantArt that he just used for the game page. So now, without further ado, let's start this game up. And there you have it! Those are all of Morat's old Fnatic game! What? Another game? No, no that, that was it. Like, we were supposed to do the joke game, that's how it's gonna end. Like, it's not a fun, another fucking game. Like, what the hell are you talking? Oh, for the love of- Now for real, this is the last Fnatic game Morat made back in the day. It was also released in 2017 and pretty much came out around the time Mac Tonight started being a thing. Just like MBD, it was a remake on someone else's Fnatic game by the same name and style that ended up being cancelled. So, this was Morat's unofficial version to the game. Whoa! The menu is covered in yellow, to signify how it is scrapped. I guess. Nah, actually, it looks more like pit. Night 1 starts in- Please, for once, speak closer to your fo- So it shows that the office is outside with the roof pretty much gone and the outside is yellow like it is post-apocalyptic. The cameras all look way more different down from the UI to how they are presented. It may be on Treasure Island, but damn, you got some different cameras like a sewer camera. The models, however, they definitely could have been better. They all look like fruit that's been rotted for 20 years. And yes, I get that it technically works for them since they are classified as undead, but god damn! So the mechanics are definitely much more different than other Fnatic games he made. You have this radio that you have to constantly check to turn the knob to get its volume up, basically a music box mechanic. When you hear a noise, you have to click on a flush button in the sewers if you hear something down there. You know, in the bathroom! Suicide mask coming out of the TV, and you have to turn off the TV. And the rest is just your regular hide under the desk, turn off the cameras. But hey, I do like how it did change some things up. Even with your standard camera shut off, it's trying to do something different with it. Everything feels much more fresh and unique compared to games like LTSB. I do like its little transitions it does when going from hour to hour. The characters can be a bit weird when appearing in the office though. From being very hard to see, to hiding under the desk, to appearing out of a wheelie bin. Mate, you look like the crumpled up trash that was thrown in it. What do you mean? Well, at least I'm closest to you. Is that so? Yeah, just wait till I get out of this thing, then I'll rip off your school. <laughs> Besides the characters being a bit hard to see, there's also how the flashlight is not mapped to a key like using control, but rather happens when you put your mouse on the spaces that use the flashlight button on, kind of like an MBD. And of course, AI is poopy doopy! So imagine trying to do max mode on this game. If you do beat it though, not only do you get a red star for it, but you also get a little plushie on the desk, based on the very first model of PNM from Anart, and that bastard also appears in front of you for an easter egg. You also got some new characters like Pluto. He finally made it back into a game since pretty much Fnatic original. And of course, who could forget P- <laughs> Now the plot, well, that's where we have a problem. There's no cutscenes, no post night stuff, and since the phone calls are hard to hear, it's basically impossible to know what the story of Scrapped was going to be. But just for the sake of it, Jake rose from the dead, Henry is now seven people now, and God had a child with Greg. Okay, cool, that's the plot. In the end, Scrapped was a pretty unique Fnatty game that Morat made, using the ideas that was made for the original Scrapped game, and came out with a pretty decent remake of the game. Which I gotta say, is a better way to close off this chapter of Morat's game development. Morat's games have always been a hit or miss with everyone. They would either be really great or just end up being really shit. And there's even been times where some people believe that Morat's games were the real deal and he was the official Fnatic developer. 2016 really was a weird year for Morat back then. But it does show how Morat has improved over the years with his latest games. 
So, overall, while these games are pretty out of date, I believe that they can pave way for the good games and be loving curves. And maybe, even the truly bad games have some good in them. Am I right, Costa? You're a fucking idiot. Well, sh-